how did Masonic temples inspire the structure of the Ku Klux Klan, specifically the Irish and Scottish Masons? Yes. Well, the Masons are, they, they, they're the ones uh, who, who, that were created, that fraternity was created by the Irish and Scottish, the Scottish Rite. All right, so the uh, Klan was formed at the end of the Civil War in 1865, and some, some Confederate, six Confederate soldiers put together this organization, they, they, they put together to maintain the mentality and culture of the, of the Confederacy. The Confederacy lost the war, but they wanted to continue that lifestyle, that culture. So they put together this uh, organization, and having come from, these six people, having come from Irish and Scottish backgrounds, and having, some of them had have, have been Masons, they wanted, to, they wanted it to be a secret organization, all right, and have a mystique about it, sort of like the Masons. Now, they, uh, they let's, let's, let's use a popular term, culturally appropriated a lot, a lot of, the, of the Masons, you know, uh, names, they altered them a little bit because, you know, they had the grand so-and-so, the exalted this and that, the imperial whatever. They took a lot of those things and applied different names to them for their own organization. So that was the influence. But let's make, let's make it clear that not uh, every Mason is a, is a Klan member. You know, not, not at all. You know, it's, it's like saying, you know, every Catholic priest abuses little boys or something. Or, or every every white person is in the Klan. No. All right. Um, also, too, right? Um, origins of the outfits and the use of torches during ceremonies. Okay, the outfits came from I forgot the, the exact name. But I'd have to look it up for you real quick. But it's a uh, Spanish tradition yeah. where they have these robes and these tall pointed hats, a lot taller than uh, than the Klan uses. But that's basically where, where the last incarnation of the outfit came from. Originally, it was just a, a sheet and like a pillowcase yeah. pulled over with eyes cut out. And then it, and then it you know, morphed into a uniform with that uh, dunce cap looking thing, All right. and the, known as a hood. And the torches? The torches were to light the cross. Yeah. You know, they, they believe that they are a Christian organization. Yeah. They're not the Christian organization. They're not Christian like I know Christians, yeah. right? But they carry the light because it's, it, they're, they're lighting the way for Jesus Christ. Now, I'll tell you a quick story. I got into a, a uh, debate with a, with a Klansman uh, one time in my car. We were riding around. I was driving. He's over in the passenger seat. And we were talking about um, why are you burning the cross if you're a Christian? Isn't that blasphemous? Isn't that sacrilegious? Well, we are a Christian organization, Daryl. You know, we burned the cross for a couple reasons. And I'd heard this before from other Klan people. I just wanted to get his take, and it, it matched everybody else's. Um, there are two occasions upon which they set fire to the cross. One is called a cross burning, and the other is called a cross lighting. A cross burning is when they take a five or ten foot cross, wooden cross, that is wrapped in burlap. The burlap has been soaked and what they call clan, clan cologne. cologne. I was going to ask you about that, clan cologne. Yeah, and, uh, which is actually kerosene or diesel fuel, yeah. right? And um, they stick it in your yard. And that, is, that is a warning. That is the only warning you will get. And what it means, and they set it on fire. Uh, what it means is we know who you are, cease and desist, move out, or the next time we come, we mean business. And they do. So that is your first and only warning. That's called a cross burning. All right, a cross lighting is when they have a rally and they have a 20 to 30 foot cross. Same deal, wrapped in burlap, et cetera, et cetera. You know, and, and then they carry their torches and they march in a big circle around the cross. And then one of the leaders will say, Klansmen, halt, and they all stop. And then he'll say, Klansmen, face the cross. These are Klansmen and Klanswomen. And they turn in and face inwards to, to where the cross is. And, they'll, and he'll say, for my God, and they all repeat, for my God, and bow. For my race, for my race, for my clan, for my clan, for my country, for my country. White power, white power. All right, Klansmen light the cross. And they all close in at the base of the cross. They take their torches and they drop them at the foot of the cross. And whoosh, this thing, you know, bursts in flames because it's soaked in that clan cologne, right? And, so they, and then they back out and they all stand like this, like a cross. And they, that, that's saluting, you know, saluting the cross. And then they give some speeches about you know, why whites are superior and everybody else is inferior, et cetera. 
And then the rally is over and they go off to the side and have, you know, um, burgers, hot dogs, you know, soft drinks, etc. All right, two questions. But, but yeah, but, uh, but I wanted to say what I was going to tell you about, about this, uh, this guy in my car. So he's explaining all this to me, you know, which I'd heard from other Klansmen, but I just wanted to hear, hear him say it. And then um, I said, but uh, you have a different, you know, you, 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 I said, you know, you have a different Jesus. Well, he said he was lighting the way for Jesus Christ. And I said, well, you have a different Jesus Christ than I have. He goes, no, Daryl, it's only one Jesus Christ. I said, no, there are two. He goes, no, there's one. I said, no, there are two. And um, he says, what, is your Jesus Christ black or something? I said, no. I said, he's not black. I said, but he's not white either. Yeah. I said, I have been to the area where Jesus Christ allegedly walked, Damascus, Syria, and those parts. I've been there, all right? I said, he appeared as one of those people. And everybody that I saw there was olive complected. Yeah. If anything, Jesus Christ is olive complected. But in, in all the countries where I've been, where there's Christianity, where there's Ethiopia, where there's wherever, every picture you see of Jesus Christ reflects the people of that country. In Ethiopia, Jesus Christ looks Ethiopian. He's dark, all right? Over here, he's either, you know, a brunette with blue eyes or blonde with blue eyes, you know? Anyway, I said, um, they're olive complected. Uh, he, was, he was olive complected. He says, well, what's your point? I said, my point is, you have a different Jesus Christ than I have. And he says, uh, well, how do you figure? I said, because you said that you're going to light the way for Jesus Christ with your torches and setting, and setting the cross aflame. He goes, well, if you were a Christian, you'd know. Jesus Christ is coming back. I said, yeah, I know he's coming back, but that makes the difference. That's why there are two. You have to light the way for your Jesus Christ. My Jesus Christ lights the way for me. Who are you to light the way for Jesus Christ? And he got very, very quiet. And then moments later, he changed the subject. But within a few months, maybe four, maybe five months, he quit the Klan based on that conversation. And today I own his Robin Hood. What's the origin of their ideology of white supremacy? Okay. This country owned black people, yeah. owned them as property, all right? Uh, People made a lot of money off the backs of slaves. Yeah. This country was built off the backs of slaves. White supremacy and slavery. That's the exactly. foundation of the United States. Exactly. So now um, I have to free you. I have to take the chains off. I can no longer make you work and pick cotton and, and tobacco without paying you. Right? But I will never let you be my equal. So I'm going to, you're inferior, I'm going to maintain superiority. So, you know, you can, you know, you can go out here and walk around and do whatever you want to do that you couldn't do before, but you will never be my equal. You will not sit at my table. You will not marry my daughter, you know, and whatever else. And I, 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 or right. drink from the same water. <laughs> All right. So I hear that, right? But when did that apply to actual slave owners? So if the average person has no slave and they're struggling themselves, I don't understand how they can look down on someone who's outside of slavery they're in the same boat. They're just struggling in this environment. They don't have wealth and they don't own anything. In theory, you're absolutely right. And you're absolutely 100% right. But in practicality, you know, they have been conditioned to believe that they are entitled to something just by virtue of their white skin. Entitlement. Entitlement. Right. Okay. And, you know, if you think about it, let's talk about voting for a second because, you know, we're, we're in, an, in an election year. All right. The only people, and I'm not putting them down, I'm just pointing out a fact. The only people in this country who were born with the right to vote are white males. Facts. Right? We, black people, had to march and protest for the right to vote. Women, the same thing. All right? So, you know, that, that's why they look or down upon you, somebody. There is a misconception that Ku Klux Klan members are usually financially poor and uneducated, right? Correct. Uh, please share some of the past presidents and, uh, yeah, please share, before we get into, uh, please share some of the past presidents who uh, were affiliated with the Ku Klux Klan, either uh, publicly or silent members. Okay. Well, um, President Warren G. Harding was sworn into the Ku Klux Klan in the White House 
as a sitting president in the green room of the White House. Um, president Harry Truman had joined the Klan for a short time before he became president. He didn't like it, he got out. Um, there is a lot of um, evidence that uh, Calvin Coolidge could have been a secret member of the Klan. Um, Donald Trump's father was arrested at a Klan rally, but it was never determined uh, was he just there as an observer or was he a member? That's never really come out, and um, I doubt if it ever will. Yeah. And uh, how prevalent do you think Klan members are in present day society and corporate America? Uh, there are a silent, lot. There are silent members. <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of them. But what's more important, um, and and more that we need to focus on, are not how many clan members, but how many people with that mentality. Because not everybody with that mentality is a member of the clan. They might be a member of the Proud Boys, the Oath Keepers, the One Percenters, the Three Percenters, the Patriot Front, the the Vanguard the National Alliance, or any number, white, area, uh, white Aryan resistance, Aryan nations, all these different groups. Um, so, you know, it's not so much uh, how many people are affiliated with the KKK or the neo-Nazis or whatever, it's how many people have that mentality. Yeah. And let me, you know, define the hierarchy for your listeners. A grand dragon, you know, everybody's heard the term grand dragon of the Klan or imperial wizard of the Klan. All right, so let me break it down for you. If you have a Klan chapter in your state um, and you have a chapter of your Klan in, in another state or multiple states, you may then consider yourself to be a national Klan group, even, even if it's only in two or three states. All right. So therefore, you must have a national leader. We call our national leader, who oversees all the states, we call that person the president. In Klan terminology, the president is known as the imperial wizard, all right? So anybody that is prefixed with the word imperial means that person is on the national level, a national officer. The top officer is the, is the wizard, president. An imperial caliph would be like a vice president, all right? And then you have treasurer, secretary, and all these different names, but they're all prefixed with the word imperial, all right? So now, um, they, and that person oversees the wizard oversees all the states in which there's a chapter of his or her, his or her organization, his cha clan chapter. So uh, now each state in which there is a clan must have a state leader. We call the state leader the governor. They call that person the grand dragon. Anybody on the grand level is on the state level. Dragon being the top governor. A grand caliph would be like a lieutenant governor. And you got secretary, treasurer, etc. Within the state, you have counties. And uh, the, the county leader is known as the great titan. Great level is county level. Uh, within the county, you have districts, which, which they call claverns. And you have district leaders. We call our district leaders the mayor, the councilman, the alderman, selectman, whatever you know, they call them. And uh, they call that person the exalted cyclops. And below the exalted cyclops are just rank and file, plain white color robe uh, clansmen. You know, the, when, you, when you start getting... Um, you start getting above rank and file, you, you start getting different colors on your robes that signify your rank. Green, for example, is the grand level. Purple and blue are the um, imperial level.